everybody. It's Sean Gibbons from the Communications Network. Thanks for being with us this afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Uh, we are back with, uh, what is this, the second or third of our storytelling? I guess technically it's our third. It's our second one. We're just digging down and getting into the weeds on a particular topic. And so hopefully many of you have been with us for the last couple of webinars we've been doing about this new Storytelling for Good platform that we're running. If you want to follow along, uh, maybe you can pull up an extra thing on your on your browser and go to com, oh, excuse me storytelling.comnetwork.org and you'll be able to, to play along with this. Uh, we are joined today by uh, once again by Tim Lewis of Hathaway Communications, and we have the great good fortune. Tim's actually in the room with us, so we're going to probably hear us giggle a little bit across the course of the hour. That tends to happen when we're all playing together. Um, we are going to be talking today about content, and, and maybe uh, rather than sort of give up the ghost right now, I'm going to let Tim kind of explain what that really means, and, and our aim here is to talk about it in a strategic context, not just kind of like what you might offer up if you were sitting in English class in the fifth grade or the fourth grade in Texas, as we were just talking about, but, but those of us who are professionals and thinking about these things with a specific aim and with a specific outcome in mind. So that's really what we're going to kind of aim to talk about over the next hour. Um, we're going to really try to dig in and figure out ways to captivate your audience and move them to take action. Uh, so those are purposeful stories. Now, a couple quick logistical items for a lot of you all. You've already been in uh, the uh, platform here, this Ready Talk platform, so you're familiar with it. Carmel, uh, thank you very much. Carmel's already in there saying hello. One of the things we want to do in this chat box is chit chat with one another, share resources. If there's something that you've seen you think is particularly interesting, share it with the group. There's about 300 of us have signed up for this. So we've got a pretty big crowd. We're going to try to get to as many of uh, the questions you all have uh, as we can. We'll stop and pause along the way to take your questions. Uh, and then, as always, this webinar is going to be recorded. Everybody always has this. We always do it. It's recorded. You can find it on our YouTube channel. You can also get to it through uh, comnetwork.org. And uh, our good friend, Yabby, is downstairs uh, here at Network HQ, and she is uh, recording these proceedings on Twitter. You can follow her at com network event, that's C-O-M network event, one word. And then the hashtag, it might be easier just to find her that way. It's hashtag com net live, C-O-M N-E-T-L-I-V-E. -E. Throw us a question, offer up uh, something that you found moving or interesting, uh, or take your own notes. Uh, all of it's welcome and good. All right, I know you want to hear from Tim, so I'm going to stop talking and hand the microphone over to you, sir. Thanks so very much for being with us. Thank you, Sean. Um, we did not coordinate our introductions. It just so happens that your comment about content leads very well into my first comment about content. Um, I love it when that happens. Yeah, it's perfect. Um, I'm not a big fan of this word, uh, despite the fact that it is smack dab in the middle of my title. Um, what is your title so that we can, yeah, my title we can give you a hard time about it? Director this? of Content Strategy. Director of Content yeah. Strategy. Yeah. Um, I always see this and I think content, like happy. Yes, like, that's, oh, that's so content. That's one of my problems. <laughs> um, and I think so the, the bigger problem is that it is everywhere and it's today and it means everything and therefore it feels like it means nothing. Mm -hmm. um, so I often find myself asking this clarifying question to others all the time. When you say content, what exactly do you mean? Do you mean a one-line message? Do you mean a TV show? Do you mean a podcast, an essay, a photo, a tweet, a newsletter? Because it's all of these things in the context that we often find ourselves using it. Um, so for our purposes today, I wanted to be clear um, what we mean, and that is a, a communication for your audience that is purpose-driven and story-driven. Um, and as you said, Sean, these are, these are the, really the two components that make a story captivating and motivating. Um, we say at Hathaway that you have to do these things in order to motivate and mobilize your audiences. Um, that's obviously a key component to these things is getting them to, to do something. So um, the science says that art has the power. And in this case, it is um, purpose-driven and story-driven um, content uh, for whatever it is you're trying to, whatever goal it is you're trying to achieve. Um, and that's what the, the two lessons in this section of the, of the storytelling website on, on ComNet site um, those are about uh, purpose and, and finding the story. Um, and so I, I know that we had, in the invitation, we had suggested some, that you take a look at uh, the, that first lesson on, on purpose. Um, some of you all may be looking at that right now. Um, but just as we were, are going, if we can pop open to that purpose lesson, um, maybe we could get some, if for folks who have taken a look, maybe you have some questions about what's going on there. Um, and we can we can feel those now. Um, but you know when we when we talk about purpose, as 
as you can see in front on the screen, um, we're talking about really determining which audiences need to see your story the most and what it is that you need to, need to do. Do you need to raise awareness? Um, why will they care about your cause? Um, so these are all things that can really inform some of the tactics that you take in your, uh, in your story. Okay, should we scroll down here? Yeah, if you want to scroll down in the lesson, you can see some of, the, um, some of those key, key topics that you'll be asked to fill in as you're working through this lesson. Um, so you're going you know, to work through which audiences um, are most important. Um, that's obviously the starting point. Um, and that'll give you some strategic focus and sort of determining what those folks might want or need to hear uh, in, in connection to the story that you're telling. Um, and if you go a little bit slower, not sorry, not slower, a little bit further down, you'll see um, awareness. Um, this is a big thing that we talk about too. What do you need people to um, know, feel, and do? Like what, what is it that they need to understand through the story um, in order to, to connect it to their, your, your strategic goals for your organization. Um, so that's a, a big part of purpose as well. Um, so we can, we can keep scrolling down to take a look at those other lessons if no questions are coming through. But um, again, we need to know why they'll care about the cause. Um, you'll need to, to think through what, uh, what, they, what key points you need to communicate about the, the problem and the solution that you're gonna explore. Um, so these are all important questions into really honing the purpose of, of your story. So it seems like folks are pretty comfortable with that. We can, um, we can keep going to the next section. Um, but this will give you a, a preview too of what these, what these lessons look like and, and what, uh, what you'll be doing in this section. And I think sort of baked into this is this idea that these are steps that you ought to be taking. Uh, before you crack open that Google Doc or whatever, maybe your Microsoft works, let's you play in that space. These are, this is an exercise that every single one of us who's working as a profession in communications for good has to start here. Start on the drawing board, whether that's a whiteboard or whatever it might be, before you sit down and start writing that story, right? Because you're just going to, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble. Yeah, and it's, I mean, we have communications folks in the line. We're all communicators. We understand that there's certain things that you have to to do throughout the, your day. <laughs> and so even for myself as a writer, I forget that, oh, I have to sit down and think first. You know, I, I can't always just show up and, and out of the come. I have to give some thought into what I'm saying and why I'm saying it. And what's great about this tool is that it, it sets you up to do that. Um, it gives you the questions that you, that you need before you move on to that, that next piece. Um, so yeah, that's certainly baked into this platform. And I, I would just say for folks, uh, for those of you who are joining us in San Francisco in just a few weeks' time at ComNet, uh, Tristan can testify to this. I was on in a conference room earlier this week with a bunch of sticky notes and starting to map out what was the information I had to convey. I kind of knew who the audience was, folks in the room, but I did that exercise. It's a lot easier to start there rather than just starting to scribble down, here's what my remarks might be. Yep. Right? It makes it a lot easier because then you realize, oh, my goodness, I have X amount of time, or in some cases I have – a certain vessel to which I can tell this story to Instagram, it's Facebook, whatever, right? And I have to get this information across. And I have to know who's receiving it and what they know and more often what they don't know. What they don't know that yeah. I don't know. Right? And, and that's the thing too is, you know, storytelling is such a, it can be such a daunting thing. Um, and so to have these, to have these points ready to go so that it, it alleviates that, a little bit of that stress. So mm -hmm. the, the, the grandness of telling a story, you can sort of let go of that a little bit when you have some of this guidance. Um, it's really helpful. Uh, and Rebecca is asking, this is just a practical question, once we've done these exercises in each lesson, is there a way to download or save the whole worksheet? And the answer to that is, yes, I believe so. Is that right, Tristan? Yeah. You should be able to print it out, yeah, or download it. Uh, I should offer you that option so that you don't have to recreate the wheel. Uh, on the other hand, you can go back as many times as you like and use this as sort of a framework or a template to guide you when you're doing this kind of, yeah. kind of thing in the office or, or at home or wherever it might be that you're working. Yeah, and it might be a type of thing where you print out the page um, once and make a bunch of copies so you can come back to it yourself by hand and fill it out if, that's, if that works for you too. 
Yeah, and again, and it's probably it's blindingly obvious, so forgive me uh, if I'm coming from the Department of Obvious, but this is also a really great tool to take to your colleagues who don't work in the communications department, right? Because while many of us have this discipline or something like it, there's an awful lot of folks that live just outside our door who come walking through and say, hey, could you help me with, this is a great way to give the work back to them and say, let's start here, because I can start to help you when you have a keen understanding of where we're going, or that you can even collaborate with yeah, right. absolutely. By getting and that's part of the idea, right, is to totally. extend extend the audience of folks in the community of folks who are thinking about themselves as storytellers. And it, and it, you know, saves some work on your end too, because we all know that you all, your days are packed with lots of different things. So if you are able to pass off some of these questions to someone who um, is maybe more directly involved with the story or has some some more direct information, then you can take the time yourself to craft this out of something that you have more experience with. Um, so it's it's sort of it's flexible. These tools are very flexible. And, and who can use them and how they can be used. Yeah, and again, just to, I don't mean to belabor this point, but this is this is really an exercise about making your communication strategic. And I think it, when it comes to some of our colleagues outside of the comm shop, it makes it really evident to them that there's actually quite a bit of science and discipline or in rigor around the way we can or that way we should be working as opposed to, you know, some people have this kind of conceit about comms people. Oh, they're an English major who writes nicely and they live down the hall. They're a nice person. I can just throw a report at them and they'll figure it out. <laughs> Inevitably, we do, right? But 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 it's a lot better and more effective if, you're, if you've offered yourself some, some guidelines and some frameworks to which you can work and, and offer those to your colleagues as well. Another question there? Uh, Lori is asking, so we're using the storytelling frame, but we can also use this tool. Uh, Lori, I'm not quite following the thread of thought, if you don't mind, maybe another line there just to kind of clarify, but I think the, the basic premise is that yes, you are going to be telling a story. And, and one of the things I think we're mindful of is that the, the vehicle for delivering that story can vary widely. It could yeah. be, and maybe Tim, I'll stop here. What, what what are we talking about here? Well, it's actually, I think it's a great segue that you bring up, Lori, because it, the, the the last webinar and the first lesson um, on the platform is uh, the narrative framework, and that is that lesson is more focused on um, your o overarching story of your organization. And so, again, this is the ubiquitousness of some of these terms begs for clarification. So in our work at Hathaway, what we say is a narrative is primarily the overarching story that you're going to tell about your organization or your issue. And storytelling is the specific stories about specific people or programs or actions that, that, that flow from that narrative. Um, so that so for those of you who were with us in the last webinar, or maybe watched it on YouTube, um, that was the, the narrative framework, and that is um, the, the sort of overarching organizational story. Um, and so what we do here in, in, this, uh, in this section is look at the social impact story map. Um, so what we've done is we've, we took, we like to find uh, established and really recognized um, frameworks and standards out in the world, and then find ways to tweak and adapt them for communicators. And so in this case, the social impact story map, uh, many of you might be familiar with the hero's journey um, from Joseph Campbell. And for those of you who aren't, or for those of you that might need a refresher, um, Joseph Campbell was a scholar of comparative literature and mythology, really awesome guy um, who studied um, all sorts of storytelling structures and myths across time and culture and started to see patterns no matter where in the world these stories came from. There were definite things that happened in each story um, that got people from beginning to end. And they were really powerful and captivating and motivating people to, to stick with the story and in many cases life-changing. Um, and I'll just make a plug for Joseph Campbell, who doesn't need it. Um, check out, if you're interested in this at all, check out um, his, his writing, particularly an interview he did with Bill Moyers. It's really fascinating um, the way that they talk about story and life. Um, and for, especially for those of us who are doing work in the social good uh, sectors, it's, it's really fascinating to, to think about how story really is a transformative um, uh, way of, of life, not just a tool, but a way of looking at the world. And so what we did is we took that framework, that hero's journey framework, and we turned it, we, we modified it slightly because it is massive and there's um, about 20 different points, depending on how you look at it, across the, the journey. Um, and we took that, which has been used to, to create great literature and, um, and Star Wars and Star Wars, <laughs> uh, some of the greatest, um, some of the greatest popular culture films in that, that we all 
that we are, have grown up with and are part of our lives. Um, so we took that and we adapted it a little bit to focus, to simplify it, to make it a little more accessible to, to folks who have to tell stories a little more quickly and on the go, and to also give it a more of a focus on social impact. So this is what we've created. So this is the, 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 the Cliff Notes version of yes. Joseph Campbell. Exactly. The Cliff Notes and the social impact focus um, version. Um, though you can see, um, we could easily go around this, um, this frame doing, uh, doing Star Wars or Harry Potter. I, though I have been to film school, probably could not do it very well because um, I forget details of some of those bigger popular films. Um, but it, it, this works uh, for any of those things. And so um, what I want to do is uh, I, can, I can get you started on Harry Potter to give you a sense of how this works. But since most, most of you aren't working with um, wizardry, I can um, give you a more practical example um, from Charity Water. Um, so we can, you can see here we've broken this, this frame up into to four main sections, um, status quo and first steps, obstacles and allies, breakthrough, and then impact. Um, so what happens in that first section is you have a status quo, you have uh, a, an existing order of life, um, and that needs to be disrupted somehow. So in, this, in the case of Harry Potter, he is living with his terrible parents, uh, or and uncle. And uncle. See, right. I've, already, I've already slipped up. Yeah, I'm telling you, Emma's downstairs, and she, <laughs> she takes deep offense when you when you get wrong with the Potter family. So the so Harry Potterverse. Harry is living this terrible life. Uh, he's in the closet. I know that much. He's locked up, and the and the owl, who I was corrected yesterday, his name is Hedwig, uh, comes and delivers the letters, but he's not getting them because of his terrible um, aunt and uncle. Um, and so. We have uh, a second messenger uh, in Hagrid who comes and really helps Harry understand what's going on with him, if there's another world. Harry questions whether he can even do that. It couldn't be true, um, but Hagrid explains to him that he can go to Hogwarts. There's a place that, uh, there's a solution. There's a place for him, um, and he starts taking steps to, the, to that journey, and he gets into that second phase where he's arrived um, at Hogwarts, and now he has a whole new host of, of challenges to deal with. He has lots of hurdles to jump through, um, and he has friends that are going to come alongside him. He has, he has the professors and his, um, and his various his little crew that's going to help him through, and they're going to get through it together. Um, and you can keep going all the way around to understand how Harry finally you know, steps into that place and really becomes um, the wizard that he is, and, uh, and his own life and others are changed as a result of it. So um, we, we, we did not work with Charity Water. We, we didn't, you, can, you have access to this video. Um, the, the technology can be challenging to show videos sometimes. So I'm going to walk you through stills. Um, but this is a video that Charity Water did um, many years ago, four years ago, in fact. And it just so happened that at the time that we were developing this, this impact map, we found this story. We didn't work with them. They did not know about the impact map. But this story uh, follows that structure perfectly. Um, so I'm going to... I'm gonna so if you want to watch this, let's just yeah. offer up to people that because the technology is... Is not awesome. Tristan's going to put a link in in just a second in the in the chat box there. Um, but you could also, for some reason, you're having having trouble there. You can also just Google Charity colon Water and then the road that changed everything, and this should pop up with you. It's, it's on Vimeo, it may very well be on YouTube as well. But then you can watch this story, maybe even save it for, for after we conclude here, so you can see it for yourself. Um, but we have broken it into pieces, so you're going to see still frames as we proceed here, and Tim's going to kind of take you through what they've done and why it's so compelling and why we think it's a great exemplar of this kind of work done really well and in a very thoughtful, smart, strategic way. And, and when we show this video in the room, there's often um, at, at least a handful of people that, when the lights come up, have, have tears in their eyes. So I cannot deliver that, that emotional impact. Um, I can just simply walk you through and explain that it starts by um, showing this village that has, uh, has not, never really had access to clean water. Um, and this, this is, is the status this quo. This is the status quo. They have been praying for clean water um, forever. They don't have it. And we move through and we see um, what life is like for them as a result. Um, so this is, we're in Malawi, and they're cut off by, from the world by a ravine. They don't have access to so many things that they need because of this ravine. They just can't get um, to the things that they need to get to. Um, and we're introduced to uh, the characters, this community of people that are living and working together. Um, and they are hardworking farmers, they're loving mothers, and they're carefree children. And notice 
um, how very simply and positively um, these people are, are described. We're seeing and, and hearing and uh, just very, very nice descriptions. You can't go, go wrong but to feel connected to hardworking farmers, loving moms, and carefree children. And I would, I would just point out here, I really recommend watching the video. We did a, a webinar just last week as it happened on visual literacy. And one of the things you'll see uh, if you watch the video or even through these stills is just the way these pictures are framed, right? There's, a, there's an element of silent storytelling that's happening just with the images. As a, for instance, these shots of the children, which you'd see in the video running, are they're shooting up on them. And you, as a, as a former film guy, would tell us, yep. anytime you shoot up on somebody, what happens? You know, you're, you're going to put me on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay, so generally speaking, the idea is that shooting up delivers power to people, right? It's, it's generally thought, like, think of a lot of the movies, like Darth Vader. They were all in the Star Wars movies, always shooting up on him because it obviously makes you seem taller and more menacing in some cases or more heroic and stronger, right? Same thing with Superman. You're always shooting up on Superman. And um, it, You'll really, see that in this video as you look at it. Yeah, and th this video is really great, too. It's in... Um, getting low, not just for, for power's sake, but being close to people, being, um, being near them. And this video is, is full of, of, of shots that are very, people are, are surrounding the camera, they're, they're very close. Um, and it delivers that sort of emotional immediacy uh, that they're, yeah, they're on your screen and yeah, they're in Africa, but they're close to you, to you visually. So that's very powerful as well. So again, we have this, we're, we're showing the status quo, this water is filthy, um, these human beings are sharing the same water as this hog, um, and we continue to see the challenge that they, they go through. So again, this is the status quo, this is the only water that they've ever known, but they hear that there's a drilling rig um, in, in the region. They're going to, there's these, uh, these rigs that are coming in to, to find, to build wells all around this, this country, uh, but again, they've been closed off to the world because of the ravine, they can't get there. Um, so they've decided um, to take a first step. They've decided to do something about this um, and they're going to build a road. So we see the solution and the first steps emerge. Um, they, they start coming together. Um, we have the obstacles uh, before them. They have to get to the, they have to get to the ravine um, and they're gonna bring allies alongside. Um, so, they start, they start uh, building that road, and because of that task, they've, they've all joined together, they've overcome that obstacle, um, and the rig is actually now able to, they're able to have access to, to the rig. So um, we, see, we start seeing all these, again, these very beautiful um, images of, uh, of the, the hard work that, that they're all doing to get there, the action that they're taking. We're now sort of moving into the breakthrough section that they've, they've overcome some of these obstacles, they've built the, the, the road, um, the rig, they have access to, to this rig is being drilled, and then the breakthrough occurs. Um, we have water, and there's, this is one of the really, I, I could have taken so many stills from this video, um, just the, the imagery here of the children dancing and playing in the water, it's very powerful, and this is, I think, a lot of times what really gets people is that breakthrough, that this is, you know, typically one of the most emotional parts of a story is that moment when something, the people that you've been rooting for, something happens and you are so moved yourself because you have been rooting for them and you see yourself in them in, them in their struggle in some way. Um, and so then we see what, what happened. These lives have literally been changed. Um, they, they have access to the clean water that they never thought that they would have access to. And, um, and then, of course, the call to action. Um, you can, we could all help make this happen ourselves. Um, again, this is some of the really beautiful imagery that, that is part of, um, a part of this video. So, you know, we, can, we could go on and on about this video for quite some time. Um, and we, we often, I hesitate often to show this video because it can be sort of daunting when you see something like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I have, a, I have a solution that I can bring up a little bit later as to uh, how you can um, sort of do some of this work without traveling the world, without having very expensive video production. Um, but for there, for this one, I think we might be a good time to, to stop and take some questions. So Celia asks, at some point, does this teaching program take us from story to soundbite? If not, where does that learning happen? Uh, folks, I think, are getting really good at story, the story of the organization of us, and now story-based strategy. But translating that into short spot news talking points seems like a gap. 
Um, you know, I think that's a that's a great question. Any any thoughts there to offer? How do you go from the large narrative framework, the mm -hmm. uh, charity water spot here, which runs over a minute? Um, how do you how do you get that down to the the, the five seconds, the ten seconds, the, the ten words, whatever yep. it might be? I think I'll say two things. If you're um, talking about sort of the, the brief talking points about your organization, um, that's sort of the, the last lesson, mm -hmm. the lesson, the first lesson, and you sort of develop your organization's narrative. And that should, we say that that really should be no more than 150 words. We call it a one minute message. Um, and you know, research shows that typically humans speak about 150 words a minute. Um, so if you can really concisely in a minute say what you do, um, you have, that, you have that, that toolkit to really draw through some of those particular sound bites. Um, in terms of, again, because you bring up a great point, we have to get to short in so many of, so much of uh, our communications. Um, there's, this framework I think gives you, the, the social impact story map that is, gives you a really great, um, again, a really good way to think it all through. Um, and this, it's adaptable. So this applies to writing. You can, you could write a uh, an entire novel or a screenplay. Most of you aren't doing that. But you could write a, a, an article, uh, something to put a longer form piece of writing that you might post online. But you can also do it with, um, say, Instagram stories. I'm a big uh, proponent of people adopting Instagram and Facebook stories. 400 million people use Instagram stories every single day. Um, and there's some really amazing storytelling happening there. I will point you to um, the organization CARE. They do some really amazing, it's, and again, this is what I was alluding to about charity water being expensive and, and daunting. That's one type of storytelling, and, and that is certainly appropriate. That type of production quality is certainly appropriate for a lot of things. Um, but CARE actually has a really, some really great examples of using Instagram stories they tell basically the same story about a single little girl somewhere in Africa using stills that they that some they are a, a, a partner shot in Africa, and that they just in 15 second um, frames through Instagram story they tell the same exact thing with a story and, and a little bit of text. You know, literally a few words per photo. They tell the same story. Um, so there, this is a helpful uh, way to think through that story and then you can find the appropriate ways to sort of chunk it up and 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 apply it to different formats. Yeah, you can almost if you go back to that story map maybe uh, you can almost think of yourself as like that's a roadmap to an Instagram story right like there's totally. 15 seconds for each one of these pieces and if you can identify that it really takes some discipline right to, to get yourself as a matter of fact we've been playing with Instagram stories as we're prepping for the conference I think we put Tristan you on the spot today um, and it's hard to take a lot of information that could be dense and maybe useful to people and finding the way to say, let's distill this down to just a few words or just a few seconds, yep. right? Um, and but there's a, lot, there's a lot to do there. I will say, someone was asking a question here about, you know, how do you go to sound bites? Um, I worked at a nonprofit prior to the network and, and served on the executive committee, and there was a rule that when you walked into the room, you had five words. What were you working on in five words? And it couldn't be, I don't know, I'm doing stuff. That's not, it was, it had to be. Those are five really, words. Those are five words. But it had to be really clear and compelling. So everybody else in the room who honestly did not care about detail knew exactly what you were doing and had a sense of how it might intersect with their work. Yeah, totally. And I think that, you know, and I'll point you to another uh, NASA does a really great job on their Instagram stories as well. Um, and and I, I think I bring that up because I know that a lot of people often say, well, we work with experts who are very dense and scientific and academic. And um, NASA is doing a really great job. Now, granted, a lot of there's a broad interest in space, and that might not be the case for everyone, but NASA does a really great job at taking some of those very complex ideas and translating them for people and telling the story as they do it. Whether it is this type of story or just a, a more, a less strategic form of it, NASA is also a great resource to check out in terms of using that tool. Yeah, and I would actually say to you, NASA is doing strategic storytelling anytime they, talk, they, they speak to the public in that way, right? Because yeah. Instagram is not a place where folks working at the Johnson Space Center are going to talk to one another, right? right? Like that's what email and other formats are for. Yep. That's about building public will to continue to fund them at a time when, you know, there are budget constraints out there. I mean, don't kid yourselves. Every government agency out there has to tell a story. I, uh, without without giving up the ghost here, my wife works at EPA, and one of the challenges they constantly have every single year is telling the story of that organization to legislators and staff up on Capitol Hill to justify why they exist. Even yeah. though for many of us, we might think it's blindingly obvious, well, perhaps 
not at just this moment, but maybe we don't travel down that path. Yeah. <laughs> um, Catherine has a question specifically about charity water, and she says, do you know how long it took to shoot and the budget for this piece? Um, I think the, the answer is we don't know off the top of our heads. What we can tell you, Catherine, is that Charity Water, uh, which is run by a really fantastic gentleman named Scott Harrison out of New York City. Scott and, and the team, and not at least a number of the folks on the team there, were for, for many, many years worked in advertising. They worked on Madison Avenue. So before they were making films about water and folks uh, in need of fresh drinking water or other things, uh, they were making film commercials or, or, or professional things, what, for-profit commercials, things for a GM, for a Coca-Cola, for a Google. Um, that was their background. And, and by the way, we're all competing against those folks. So the, one of the reasons I think Scott's been so successful is that he was running with the, the large organizations out there. Like he was familiar with how you, know, how you market if you're a Ford Motors, if you're a Google, if you're a Coca-Cola, and he's adapted that and applied it to the social good space. And I don't think, uh, I happen to think that's the challenge before all of us. We are competing for money share. I, I read something the other day that uh, Nielsen, this is going back maybe two years now, but they've been measuring, um, as they do, uh, how much information and media we consume as, as adults every single day. won't surprise anyone to know, you probably felt this in your bones, that that number's been going up. But just a couple of years ago, uh, it was nine hours and 39 minutes a day was what each and every one of us was consuming on an average basis. You can imagine that. Like that's both producing content, reading emails, watching television, listening to a podcast, whatever. But just uh, two years ago now, they measured again, and it had jumped up from one year to the next, from 2014 to 2015, I believe it was, or 2015 to 2016. Uh, it jumped up from nine hours and 39 minutes to 10 hours and 39 minutes. So that. The, the place that we are moving into is, and you know this, it's a crowded marketplace. <clears throat> and it's something we um, will discuss this in the next webinar too, is some of the, the challenges around that and how you can overcome them. Um, I think one thing that I'll say to the question about budget, and because uh, it's a question we get all the time. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, I could, we could guess about how much it would cost to, to make something like this and what type of cameras were used. Um, but I would say, I, the point that I would stress here is that um, different types of production are um, good for different types of things, right? So you want a feature film to look a certain way. You want a video like this from Charity Water to, to look a certain way. Um, so it's about finding what the, the again, the purpose of the story is, the purpose of the communication is, and, and fitting the right production model to that. Um, and this is something, we, we just had this conversation yesterday in a workshop here in DC, um, and I said, one of the great things, great piece of news for folks like you all is that with the rise of everyone having a phone in their pocket and people doing FaceTime and people making their own personal Instagram stories, we don't expect the highest quality video um, that we the, that is possible. We don't expect we expect a good story and typically good sound. And even so, sound is increasingly less relevant because people aren't listening. They're just they're just scrolling through Instagram or Facebook and they need to read what's being said. Um, so some of the most important components are actually the story and the sound. Um, and that's why this really focuses on getting the story right um, because people are and, and you'll see if you look at NASA's they don't have great they don't have great video quality, but they have great stories. They have great videos in, in, the, in, a, in a, a, a content sense. Um, so you can sort of, I think, rest a little easy. Someone came up to you after the workshop and said, I'm a video producer, and you're right, and I hate it. <laughs> but it's true, and it's, it's actually for those who like to produce higher quality stuff, it can be frustrating. But for those who, who can't, for whatever reason, um, the, the democratization of these video mediums has really been beneficial and it gives a lot of opportunities. And the, another great thing about Instagram is that inside the, the, inside the app, there's an entire production studio um, in terms of capturing video, adding text, adding images, adding GIFs. You can do so much with, with no training. You can just by playing around. So I think it's a really powerful tool for folks to consider. All right, so we jump ahead. I think we've got through uh, a few of the questions we have now. Why don't Great. we jump back to, to where we were in the presentation? I'm sorry, I know we were. Let's talk about impact. Yeah, so what we can do now is we can jump back to the site and we can take a look at this lesson and how it, um, how it plays out on the site. 
Um, so if you go, if you scroll down from the key lesson about purpose to, the, to telling the story about impact, um, you'll see again this little primer here on um, the hero's journey and where it comes from and how we've adapted it. Um, so we've taken um, the, the questions about people, um, your audience, and we, we term those characters in the, in the lesson. Um, and really it's walking, it's walking you through um, how, to, how to put together that story. So if you scroll down, you can see each one of these sections um, is broken out. And you can start by watching the video of, the, um, of that Charity Wire video as reference. Um, and so that's always there at the top of that page. If you want to go back and see a really good story, there it is. Um, and then we're going to, and then we break that up into um, the story arc. But first, we start with some basic questions about character and setting. Who's who's the story about? Who is telling the story? Where is it taking place? Um, those are just some good grounding principles to get your head around what you um, how to how to reference how to how to begin the story. Or for folks who are who aren't storytellers who are who are inputting that data, um, they can have these starting questions. And then we really we start off uh, at number four. Um, we get into that arc, and we're gonna. This lesson will walk you through that arc in its entirety, all the way around from section one to section four. Um, and you can really start filling that in. And we give you tips as what to do for as you're answering that question. Um, so you can see right here in that first section, eyes opened. We're going to recommend that you recreate the moment when that person realized that something had to be done, that something had to change in their situation. Um, and then we offer that example um, from the video. So this was, they knew that it had always been bad. Um, and they, that was a problem and they had to find a solution to it. So the lesson will continue and it walks you through each of these arcs, giving you um, tips and examples along the way on how to fill it out yourself. And finally landing at uh, that that call to action, which again is, is very important as we mentioned in the last webinar as well, really understanding not just what action someone can take um, for that cause, but why it matters, the sense of urgency that they really do feel like this is something that they have to, to do, they have to participate in this somehow, um, because it, it, it matters, that there's, and there's, it's, it's going to need to be resolved in some way um, soon. And, and the good news is if you've done this process, right, you, you've thought about who your audience is, what kinds of messages that they would react to, by the time you get to the call to action, you probably got a really clean and really clear idea of exactly what's going to move them. Absolutely. Right? We're not going in here blind. That's the whole purpose is that we've mapped out how to get from here to there so by the time the call to action comes around, they're chomping at the bit. Right. And you've, you've by starting off in that purpose section, again, yeah, you've probably figured out to some extent what your call to action is already. Um, and if you want to just scroll back up to uh, the story map on this page, and if you have questions, guys, again, I just I encourage you, you know, I'm trying to be pretty informal here. Please just jump into the chat box, ask a question. We're happy to, uh, Tristan is driving here on the, on the website. Of course, we'd encourage you to please take advantage and, and tool around on this by yourselves as well. But, but if you have a question, just fire it away, and we'll, we'll try to get to as many as we can. One question that we get in person, in our in-person workshops a lot is, um, oh, I only have the status quo and the first steps. I don't, there's, no, there's been no breakthrough yet. This is going to take forever. This is a story that we're going to be telling for four years. Um, what do we do? And while I think what's great about this map is that you can sort of, first of all, from a storytelling perspective, you can start in different places. You, mm -hmm. might, you might want to start with a breakthrough and, and then go back to the, and, and then work around to the, uh, the status quo because it might be beneficial for your audience for them to understand what happened first or what that breakthrough is and then to learn more. Um, but to the point about maybe not having all the pieces, that's okay uh, because that might be the point of your story. Maybe you don't have impact yet or maybe you don't have the breakthrough yet, but you, need, but you can organize your story in such a way that you, you've got, you know the status quo, you know the first steps, um, you know who needs to be a part of it, and the, what, the point of the story is to communicate that you need to find that breakthrough. And you might need help from X, Y, or Z to get to that point, whether that's some sort of fundraising or people signing up for something or whatever it is that it might be, that call to action. You can highlight that piece of the story as the, the reason why you're telling it. It's like, this hasn't happened yet, and we need your help. 
Absolutely, and I think it's really worth pointing out here that while we're seeing this as a circle, it's a graphic representation, and when there's a temptation for all of us to be kind of linear in our thinking, chances are if you've gotten to the point where you want to tell this story, there was already a breakthrough. The yep. fact that you're in a position to start talking about this, to tell a story, you know more than you think. I think sometimes this is something that we think about here in the office at the network is that sometimes when we're stuck, we realize we already know the problem because we're talking about it, even if we don't quite have the words yet, and that there's already been a bit of a journey that we've already traveled to get yep. to what maybe feels like for a lot of folks the status quo. Yep, right. Totally. Um, Lori asks a question here. Remind me, does the platform save our work? I love this, but I know it will take me more than one sitting to complete these sections. Yeah, I think doing it thoughtfully, it's true. Um, you have to, interesting, correct me if I'm wrong here, I believe you have to put in your uh, email address and then you create kind of a profile on this site and it will then save your work. So when you come back, uh, you have access to it. I don't know if it allows you to keep multiple accounts so that, you know, you might want to do this for multiple stories. I'm not sure that we're able to keep folders. Um, Lori, if you wanted to do something like that, my best guess is to go a little lo-fi and maybe print these things out and, and do them longhand, and then you can keep them in files. You can apply them to lots of different projects that you're working on. Yeah, absolutely. One thing I'll say, too, I think what I like about this map is that it's not just for when you're actually writing a story. It's a good way to be thinking generally in meetings. You know, to have, to have these sort of points of status quo and first step obstacles and allies, as you're, you know, in meetings or, you know, talking with, with colleagues, um, you can sort of be on the lookout for those stories and you can sort of be, have in mind, oh, that's a, I, I get what's going on there and you can apply this thinking to those interactions so that you can, you can sort of be on the hunt for those stories if they're not necessarily coming to you. Um, so it's just a, generally a nice way, a nice way of thinking to, to hold in your, in your mind. Uh, let's see, Leslie is saying, it would be cool to have these as PDF downloads rather than printing these forms longhand. Is that possible? Well, we built the site with them as PDFs. I think, um, I mean, let's, the short answer is probably, not this year would be the, the short answer because we, we spent our budget building this thing. Um, but that is a fantastic idea. Uh, just so you know, I think our disposition is in, and you, if you've been with the network for a while, you've probably heard my screed against PDFs. Uh, very few of them are machine readable, and so what you end up doing is when you make this stuff and make it available as PDF, you can't find it on the web. So our disposition is to try to build everything digital first, which means it's going to be presented in HTML. But this stuff will still print exactly as you see it on the screen if you send it off to your printer. So you should get a pretty clean copy if you, if you print it out that way. Uh, Megan is asking, uh, Megan is sharing something with Catherine. That's great. It's exactly what we want you guys doing in the chat box is chit-chatting with one another, sharing resources. Um, while you guys are, are talking to one another, why don't, we, uh, why don't we jump back into the presentation and move ahead a little bit? Or did we finish? Yeah, I think we're, we're Oh, we're done. Yeah, All right. Well, this was going to be, this was going to be always a shorter one, so we'll yeah. get through this. Um, I, th I think I'll say too, you know, and it's, it's great that you all are sharing work because, you know, many of you are at different points in this, in this journey and we find too in these workshops that we do, um, you know, some people need help in, in one area and other, other people need help in a different area and sort of um, that's what's great about getting, doing these in-person workshops is that there's, this happened yesterday, someone raised their hand and asked a question. This it was, was at a, the Com Network DC local group gathering. Yeah, 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 we had a great, a great workshop with the Com Network uh, DC local group and, and someone had a question, they just couldn't figure it out, and then everyone in the room started brainstorming. They had some sort of idea or solution based on what we had been teaching um, that day, earlier in the day. So um, you are some of the best resources for each other in a lot of ways because you're on the ground helping. You are stealing my opening line to the conference. I think, I mean, this is really true, right? The future yeah. of learning is through networks because yeah. we can only see what we can see, but as soon as we have access and opportunities to talk to one another, we get to see from somebody else's point of view, and inevitably we get smarter when that happens. Okay. Right? Just, yep. We are each other's resources. So you're going to hear me say that a little bit more in San Francisco, but I, I think it's absolutely true. And it's one of the reasons why the network we feel is just so important is because it's not Tristan, it's not me, and, and from time to time it's not you, Tim. It's, it's all of these folks sitting in the room and gathering. And each person has a little piece of something that has value, and they may not think it's all that valuable until somebody else realizes, I haven't traveled that road before. I need to know what you know. Yep. And that's how we can help one another. Yep. Um, so Catherine had a question here. Uh, well, let's start with Kelly's question here. She said, what about achieving awareness 
rather than seeking a breakthrough? Well, I mean, I, I would say that awareness is often a breakthrough. Um, that's something, whether that is you need to uh, raise someone's awareness about an issue or you are going to show uh, someone achieving an awareness. Um, but yeah, I think that does, that does bring up the point that sometimes, the, sometimes, and that's why I say that this, this map is very adaptable and malleable because you, can, you might not need that breakthrough, you might have to, you might have to replace it with awareness. Um, but I think that in my take, those things are sort of related. I'll, I'll give you a version of this. Maybe that would be an instructive, Kelly, and I'm just making this up so it's imperfect, all right? Um, if you're looking at the story map here, uh, I would say that uh, this, this is a story about journalism in America. Uh, we know that today uh, is a very challenging environment to be a journalist. Uh, the business model has largely collapsed. Um, and that has created all kinds of obstacles. You know, many newspapers or other news organizations are closing their doors. Uh, access to information has exploded at the very same time, whether it's the Facebooks and the Twitters, and people are getting more and more information. As we talked about earlier, people are now spending 10 hours and 39 minutes a day finding, consuming, and creating content, media, and information. Um, and so the breakthrough, uh, this is where I would raise your awareness, is that in 20, I believe it was 15, there were, according to the U.S. Census, this is kind of interesting, fairly new data, in 2015, there were 77,000 some odd number of folks who reported that they were working journalists. Their paycheck came from a media company and they, they self-described or self-declared their profession was journalist. Last year, 2017, that number was 39,000 odd number of people. That is a massive collapse in the number of people who are professional journalists, from 77,000 down to 39,000, right? That's not a breakthrough. In fact, that's a calamity, right? But that raises your awareness. And I can now tell you the story. What is the impact of all of that? You know, there's a, quite a, there's a number of questions that probably we could raise and discuss as a group about our civic life, about uh, the stability of our democracy, about the integrity of the information that we're receiving. Um, but that all goes back to just like, does that number scare you? 77,000 down to 39,000 in a fairly short order of time. Uh, that's not a breakthrough. That's a problem, right? And that awareness of that problem may spark some of you on this call to think, well, there's something we ought to be doing about this. Uh, all right, let's go. Catherine says, so uh, going back to Joseph Campbell, he's a great source, but how do you fit uh, Aristotle and that all drama is conflict in? Yeah, so I mean, I think what you're getting at there later on is that the question of you know conflict and and uh, obstacle and how that applies. I would say that you know in any story you have to have a problem, and I would identify conflict as, as problems here. So in this case, it's yeah, it's the obstacle. It's they need to, or, or the, it's a combination of the obstacle and the problem. They the water is dirty, and they need to overcome that obstacle to to get clean water, right? Um, similarly, when you're talking about, as we discussed last week, when you're talking about your organization, um, there is always has to be a problem that you're trying to, to solve. Um, and the solutions that you offer um, are the way that you help people overcome that problem. Um, so that's sort of my take um, on the connection of conflict and, and the way we talk about conflict in stories and how it applies to, to these, uh, this type of storytelling. Right. And so, I mean, the truth is, if you wanted to just do this for yourselves without even going through all the lessons, if you took this map and, and could sort of even just trace it out on a piece of paper in front of you, you could probably give yourself the discipline saying, you know, in four or five words, what's the status quo? Yeah. You know, what are the obstacles now? And once you have that framework, you can apply it in dozens of different ways. I, you know, you can walk over and say, how would I do this on Instagram? How would I tell this story? How would I tell this story on Facebook? How would I tell this story through a tweet? Yep. Right? And, and I think we all know living in today's age, you can get quite a lot across in the span yep. of however many characters you're now limited to on Twitter. Uh, and some folks uh, who will go unnamed are doing quite a bit of, a, quite a bit of work with that. Um, what else? Do you, Tristan, you maybe call up the site real quickly just in case we have a few folks with us, and then we're going to give everybody back the balance of their time. We don't have to go the full hour on the sort of questions here. So while we're pulling up the site, if you all could uh, type in any more questions you have for Tim, uh, really grateful for his time. But maybe Tristan, take us out to the, to the main page just so we can sort of, for those of you who weren't with us, and you can find this on YouTube, we did sort of an overarching quick you know, 30,000 foot tour of what this site is, but let's do, just do a quick look at this again. So what we're looking at today is that content block. Like there are a series of 
lessons that you can take. And what we're going to encourage you to do is that you're thinking about strategy, you're thinking about content, thinking about engagement, thinking about evaluation. That these are the pillars of making strategic stories a part of your work, right? This is these are the things that are required to do that. And you can take each of these lessons, and if you scroll down, um, what's really cool about this resource for those of you who maybe aren't familiar with this is these guides that we've made. We've recognized that telling a story on Facebook is different than, than a story, such as it is, that would appear on Twitter or on Medium or how that might differ on Instagram. So you can avail yourselves of those. And then, uh, Tristan, maybe we can show people the, the case, not the case study, yeah, the case studies, case studies and some of the other articles that are in there. There's, these are embedded um, throughout this resource, but you can get there from here. So you can see, uh, you can search by topic, uh, whether it's, it's some of the platforms you're using or some of the questions that you might have or some of the topics that you might be working on. But we've been really fortunate. We've got uh, dozens upon dozens of folks, uh, Tim among them, who have contributed here and have written pieces that may have the answer to some of the questions that are, that are jumping to mind. And so the hope is that this, will work, this resource will work for you in a lot of different levels. It's a template to help you think about how to make stories within your organization. It offers you some how-to guides for or for your colleagues uh, to help you understand some new platforms that exist to, to distribute and share stories, right? And then it has some uh, pieces in here, whether they're case studies or articles that help you think through some of the thornier, more difficult questions you might encounter along the way. Uh, and Lori is asking, hey, is this competition for Spitfire's smart chart with a nice smiley face? Uh, no, 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 no. We, we just think, that, listen, uh, I would venture to say that, that all of us have got to get a hell of a lot better at this if we want to see the kind of change in the world that I think we all roll out of bed to try to make. Um, I'm an optimist. I think on balance, the world is getting to become a, a better and more just place. But there's a lot of work in front of us. And, you know, going back to that, that number I gave you earlier, 10 hours and 39 minutes of the day, I would venture to say a lot of us are consuming, you know, I don't know what the percentage is, 60%, 70% of that consumption is commercial, right? It's about buy these sneakers, covet that watch, um, you know, you'd be happier if you lived in this building. Whatever it might be, it may not be directing you in some of the places that we as folks who work in communications for good, think that people could spend time and attention and effort and energy, maybe even a few bucks, that might result in really transforming somebody's lives, as Charity Water has encouraged you to do. That we have tremendous power, um, but we haven't quite unlocked, unlocked the potential of it, and we haven't quite realized that we're not competing with each other. We're not competing with folks in the nonprofit space. I mean, maybe we are a little bit, but I would venture to say, I'm, you know, you're not competing with somebody who has 2% market share. You're competing with people who have 80% market yeah. share, right? So I think we all have to keep our eyes focused on where the actual challenges lies. And I'm not casting aspersions on the Coca-Colas and other for-profit companies of the world, but, but at the end of the day, uh, I, I think we have compelling stories to share, and it's really important that we share them. Absolutely. Uh, let's see, Carmel asks, process question, how do we sign in to save our worksheets or do we need to be members of the communications network? Tristan, he is... You don't need to be a member. Uh -huh. No, we made this available to everybody. We don't want to put barriers in the way of people doing good stuff. Uh, if you shoot a, a Tristan a message uh, after this, we will figure this out with you. The short answer is you, you stumped us. Um, uh, do you need to sign in to save your worksheets? I think so. I think so. All right, listen, guys, we're almost at the top of the hour. Uh, you all have been very, very kind. I know we had a lot of you in here. Hopefully we got to as many, all the questions that we could. Um, deeply, deeply grateful uh, to Tim for coming back and joining us. He's been doing a lot of work on this, as, as he, he's alluded to over the course of this hour. He spent all day yesterday over World Wildlife Fund talking to do you guys have 50, 60 people over there uh, as part of the Com Network, for, uh, Com Network Local Group's uh, workshop, day-long workshop that you and Doug put on for them. It was fabulous. We've done those in San Francisco and L.A., and I think we have another one in the works. I can't remember where. Uh, but stay tuned for that, and we will be back uh, with, with Tim and the team uh, for our final webinar in this series uh, after comments. So end of October, you'll see invitations for that fairly soon. In the meantime, I just want to thank everybody who's been tuning in and, and, and taking and making use of this resource and to our friends at Rockefeller for making this possible and obviously the team at Hadaway and the folks at 3Spot who helped to build this. Um, really grateful to everybody uh, and hope you're all doing well. If you have any questions, we're all on the other side of an email and happy to chat. You can also get us on Twitter and, gosh, by any number of different ways. I think I'll probably respond to smoke signals. Um, be well, everybody. We'll see you soon and grateful for your time.